the problem that we want to solve is basically uh, the following. Users have to go through the KYC process with uh, institutions that uh, are interacting with money. And that's something that we can't eliminate. You do the KYC. So first of all, they know who you are. They have your ID, et cetera. And then any sub subsequent transaction to do afterwards uh, isn't even anonymous. And it's like interacting with crypto. So for example, you buy ADA on whatever, MoonPay or Binance. You then transfer that ADA to your bank account. Binance knows everything about you. The bank knows everything about you. None, nothing about this is anonymous. And it's also transparent because it's on the blockchain. So it's kind of like we haven't achieved anything. We just called USD something else and it has a different value. The system itself is exactly the same. So what we want to basically create here, it's, it's a solution where not a single source has all the information uh, except for the user. Keep in mind, if, if you're a bank now and you're listening, this, this market is worth trillions of dollars. Like You can't escape the fact that more and more people want to embrace crypto for various reasons. What's up, Eddie Nation? Welcome to Dapp Central, your home for everything blockchain and crypto. My name's Fareed. As a part of today's video, we're doing a deep dive into ZK Fiat, which is a brand new idea developed by Adam with the Jira Wallet team. Without any further ado, Adam, welcome up. How are you? Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be here, Fareed. Yeah, no, I'm uh, I'm excited to have you on. Um, the first time I had you on was to discuss um, Cardano Shield. Yeah, that's done extremely well. Um, very excited to have you back on. We spoke not too long ago about Jira Wallet in some proposals. Mm -hmm. And this is a brand new idea aiming to really bring Jira out of the um, current space that it's in. I think this offers a lot of expansion. And again, I want to thank you here for your time. Now, before we even dive into that, um, for anybody who's seeing and hearing you for the first time, do you mind briefly giving us a, a little bit about your background and how you're contributing right now to Jira Wallet? Yes. Um, so we are actually in the, in the middle of uh, acquiring, officially acquiring Jira Wallet from the original team. Uh, so I'm serving right now as the CEO uh, for Jira Wallet um, in this intermediary state. Uh, it's going to be a brand new team, basically, with a couple of, of people from the old team uh, uh, joining with the development efforts. And yeah, basically what we want to do, the reason for this acquisition is to uh, take Jiro to the next level, but not in a uh, cliche way, but actually creating solutions that are more than just non-custodial wallets to hold your NFTs and tokens. So uh, this is where uh, the idea, the ZK Fiat idea comes into play and other things that we want to do. And uh, this, there, there are things to integrate with the token that we have as, as Jira has its own token as well. So yeah, very exciting things. And uh, we will probably share a lot of those uh, in the coming weeks. First off, congrats. Um, and then second off, for anybody who wants to check out the Jira Wallet, I'll leave the official link to that platform down below. It's available at JiraWallet.io. Did you want to add anything else there? Nope, that's it. Yeah, that's... Uh... All right. Perfect. Well, let's segue straight into ZK Fiat. But actually, before we do that, there's the hackathon that just took place with Endmaker. You know, so I'd love to hear about your experience there, obviously, as a developer, you know, how far was it from where you're at? And then how enjoyable, you know, what was the actual event like? Dude, I got to tell you, and uh, I wrote about this on, on Twitter as well. And um, they have, uh, they planned such a good hackathon event. I work in tech for probably 15, 16 years now. And I participate in a lot of conferences and a lot of hackathons and uh, in different companies. And um, it's it's usually like you bring a couple of uh, pizza plates, some beer, and you call it a hackathon and tell everyone to work 24 hours. These guys, first of all, they brought like the, the, the place itself was very comfortable. They took care of all the, you know, technical things and um, everyone has like... Um, the, the the energy there was absolutely amazing. Uh, it took place in Berlin. We are the, the most of the team is originally from Israel, so we we took a flight. Uh, but we saw first of all, I personally love uh, Berlin um, and I have friends that live there, so it was like a good opportunity to also uh, visit Berlin. And um, I gotta tell you, crypto Twitter is so different 
than meeting people in real life. Even if like you speak with the same kind of people, if you speak to developers and stuff like that, like the energy is absolutely different. And uh, the kind of masks that people wear on, on Twitter and uh, I don't know, kind of the, the meme talk and the degen stuff, that shit doesn't uh, happen in real life. And we were all geeking out about Cardano and crypto and ideas and... Um, Really, the what Endmaker did was probably something they have to do now. And, it, you know, they raised a really high bar. The food was tremendous. They took, uh, they, they, they brought tents there for people to like, if they want to take a break and go grab a nap. Um, it was in a very good location. And yeah, I absolutely loved what they did it was such a good event it was really really fun really well organized like you wouldn't know that this is their first time doing something like that so really really uh well made no i'm happy to hear um interesting picture here i want to share i mean it looks like this was for everybody of age right so i'm not sure so if you this was actually the dj this was the dj uh for the event um like after the winners were announced mm -hmm. this guy oh my god man that what he he uh i asked about him and uh, apparently he's very known a techno dj in berlin um and he absolutely rocked everyone after after the the ceremony it was such a blast so funny that's awesome that's yeah. awesome. So, I mean, I'm not a developer, but I would love to see the inclusion of just regular people, right? Because again, I don't think that that <clears throat> that they're they're actively excluding regular people, but obviously, it's very tech heavy, very dev focused, right? So, so you know, there were a lot of people that uh, that came to the hackathon that had no technical background, like at all. People from marketing, people from finance, um, not the like. I even want to say. 30% of the people there were not developers, to my surprise. And you know what also was surprising? A lot of them weren't Cardano maxis or even that familiar. They came to this hackathon to learn about Cardano. And what was incredible is that um, they were just browsing between the teams uh, while they were working on their ideas. And um, without like, without a doubt, any question they had, and they they had a lot of questions about Cardano. Like there were there was some guy from Solana who tried to like push the envelope and and ask you know what he th he thinks are gotcha questions, but in a good in a good way. It wasn't like aggressive or whatever. But um, you know, actually uh, digging deeper and showing them like what it's like to develop on Cardano, how the ecosystem looks like, and they were they were like genuinely impressed and surprised and they really loved the hackathon itself like there was in the same building there was a solana hackathon a few months ago and uh, everyone said like that it's nowhere near the same level and again not to not, not to say anything bad about solana but you you could see that the endmaker team really cared that this event would be the best like event that they can pull off and they act they absolutely did it was amazing no shout out and congrats to patrick i know he's been um working extremely hard here within the Cardano community an early og a pioneer right so i think this is um very well um deserved and as you mentioned looks like you know this could be a thing moving forward i know that we saw buy-in from i believe the Cardano foundation and iog as well right so i'd love yep. to see this um be expanded and really grown right um to, to fit the needs um and then as you mentioned there a little bit of conversion happening as well right where you've got developers looking from outside in that maybe didn't think cardano could do something like this and maybe now their opinions have changed and maybe now they go back to their solana community and actually talk you know positively about cardano which then hopefully brings in more people next year so yeah yeah um that said Congrats again to you, right? Because you guys actually were the winners of the open track. What what would you say that that was? Basically, open. there were three tracks. Yeah, there were there was an open track. That's like the IOG one. There was a midnight track, and there was a governance track. Um, so yeah, so we there were three winners. Each one got like a, a prize money, and uh, yeah, we were one of the winners out of three for this particular track, which was more like uh, an open idea, nothing necessarily specific. Um, and there is a little bit of a story about that too, where uh, our idea uh, has like a zero knowledge part to it, which 
suits very much the midnight track because that's exactly what they um, uh, they're advocating. And uh, we had to actually um, kind of get in touch with all the judges and ask them what they think we should like, what track we should uh, go on. Uh, and they started fighting between each other, like, no, it should be midnight. Now it should be IOG. It was kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, if, eventually, because we haven't developed the proof of concept on midnight, then uh, I think everyone agreed that uh, for now it's it's uh, it's the open track. But you know what? Uh, Tomorrow already, I'm going to meet with the Midnight team because um, the idea suits so well with what they want to achieve. Um, so yeah, so I, I think it'll be positive no matter what. Yeah, I'm very, very excited for you to say the least because I know you've been working very hard as well from a developer perspective, right? Um, I talked about Cardano Shield earlier, obviously now the Jira Wallet, and I think there's also Adabox. So again, you've contributed quite a bit here, and I think this might be the breakout product um, again, nothing against everything else that you've done before, but I think the opportunity, the use case and the adoption, as you've mentioned, um, with Midnight is huge. So yep. that's it. We've got the foundation laid here. Um, I've brought you on to discuss ZK Fiat, the future of confidential compliance. Adam, break it down for us like we're five. Can you highlight, you know, what this is all about and exactly what use case or what problem it solves? Yeah. Um, I can actually share my screen and I can show the presentation that I showed in the hackathon. So uh, I only had four minutes to uh, to talk about this, which was uh, extremely challenging because uh, the idea itself has a complex problem. The solution is not very straightforward, um, but hopefully I can uh, narrow it down with a little bit more time now and, and just show a little bit uh, even a demonstration of how it acts. That, that's basically the proof of concept that, that we built. Uh, so shout out to ChatGPT for the nice catchphrase. I just kept it because it, it, it fits, you know. Um, but yeah, we, we, we think there's a place for uh, a future of confidential compliance. So the problem that we want to solve is basically uh, the following. Users have to go through the KYC process with uh, institutions that uh, are interacting with money. And that's something that we can't eliminate. Like the crypto world, with all due respect, with Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, um, a lot of the, let's say, the, the really, um, uh, the diehard fans of crypto, where they want to be the solely want to be the bank, they don't want any interaction with the banking system, the financial system as a whole. I think those are probably the minority, um, and especially if you're looking for a a, a vast and um, you know a full blown adoption of blockchain technology, we need to work alongside with them like it's it's impossible to have two financial systems in the world probably uh yes one ada is one ada but until that time comes um you want to have a way for users uh to enjoy both worlds and this is kind of what we are trying to do the, one of the sentences I'm using here that says, for, for blockchain technology to gain widespread adoption, there needs to be a seamless way to ensure regulatory compliance without sacrificing privacy. Um, and that's kind of the problem that, that is happening right now. You do the KYC, so first of all, they know who you are, they have your ID, et cetera. And then any sub subsequent transaction to do afterwards uh, isn't even anonymous and it's like interacting with crypto so for example you buy ada on whatever moonpay or binance you then transfer that ada to your bank account binance knows everything about you the bank knows everything about you None, nothing about this is is um uh anonymous and it's also transparent because it's on the blockchain so it's kind of like we haven't achieved anything we just called usd something else and it has a different value the system itself is exactly the same. Um, so what we want to basically create here, and um, this is where the solution comes into play, is basically uh, it's it's a solution where a single, not a single source has all the information uh, except for the user. And this is what makes it special. So imagine the following scenario basically i'll just break down technically what's what's happening and what i'm showing here on this table so you have a user uh you have a bank the bank is white labeled inside a non-custodial wallet that 
that's on Cardano, for example, Jira Wallet. Now, if it's white labeled inside, it's it, it can use uh, uh, technologies where Jira Wallet doesn't track any information between the user and the bank. It's all encrypted between the two of them, but it's white labeled. And you, from a user perspective, it's very convenient because it's inside the wallet. So, for example, you want to open a new bank account with this crypto-friendly bank. So you do the KYC process with the bank once. And what happens in this KYC process, uh, the bank needs to generate essentially a, a zero knowledge proof. And this is where the zero knowledge thing comes into play. So it creates the proof. The proof it comes in the form of some mathematical equation essentially that you can trickle down to an answer of yes or no at the end or true or false rather. Um, when this happens, the bank needs to return back to the user its proof. And this is something that will live physically um, on the user's machine, basically, on his local machine. And as part of the browser, it's not a file that he needs to keep or anything like that, but it's basically uh, something that the user keeps. And then now the user holds proof that he went through the KYC process with the bank, and the bank has the means, um, and I'll share that in just a minute in the live demo, he has the means to verify this proof. Um, in this proof, however, uh, you can build it in a way that the bank doesn't necessarily know who you are, even if he receives the proof from you. Now, as a wallet, it's it's written here in red because the wallet doesn't have the KYC information, and the wallet itself can't verify the proof. Only the bank can. Now, this is good for non-custodial wallets in general because this allows them to act and not... Uh, they, they don't need like a special license or something like that because as soon as the, the wallet is involved somehow with the finances, that's it. It's it's becoming a custodial wallet. Um, so again, very important for crypto that this remains non-custodial. Now, the, the twist basically to make this um, an anonymous thing for the user later on when he wants to transact with the bank is that at the same time that the proof is generated, uh, the bank sends the wallet, I called it a user ID. So we have like a user ID, imagine it's just some numbers, a hash or something. Um, and at the same time, the wallet generates a bank ID and puts it in like a table. And now the wallet knows that these two are related. So I have a user ID, it's some number. I have a bank ID, which is another number. And I just know that they are related. I know that they're at the same person, basically. But again, as a user, I don't know who that person is. I don't know their name. I don't have their photo. I don't have anything. And at the bank, like I've said, the proof is sent directly to the user. Now, the user, as you can see here, he receives the user ID from the bank. He receives the bank ID from Jiro. So as a user, everything is green and you hold all the information, which suits exactly the crypto ethos, basically. Um, now, an example of how this would work and how the user remains anonymous in this case is that any transaction that they would do from the non-custodial wallet um, with the UTXO model, and I think to some, even an EVM model, um, when you build that transaction, you can add metadata to the transaction. One of the metadata can be basically what we call here a bank ID. And that, that is like the unique identifier for the bank to know that it's always going to be the same user. So when the transaction happens, what we do, the user, first of all, it creates some API call to the bank to verify that he went through the KYC process. At this stage, the bank still doesn't know of the transaction that's about to happen. So the user sends the proof, the bank verifies the proof, and then the wallet builds the transaction, but it builds it with a different bank ID because we know the user ID. And now this is how we obfuscate essentially the user, the real user. And we send the bank the transaction with a bank ID, and that's the unique identifier. From a regulatory perspective, this is good for all parties because as a bank, you only need to know that the user went through the KYC process. It's not, it doesn't matter what happens in the transaction from the bank's perspective unless and that's you know that's a uh, an asterisk there that you need to put um 
The reason the banking system and any financial institution needs your identity is because they check literally with third party sources. They check if your name is uh, under any, um, you know, worldwide lists of uh, uh, people that committed fraud, phishing, uh, money laundering and anything like that. And they check that on every transaction, essentially, almost any transaction. So to, to cut it, things a little bit short, basically what happens is the user has all the information. The wallet only has part of the information. The bank only has part of the information. But interacting with all three generates basically a use case where you are compliant. You make the transaction, for example, depositing funds. But the bank doesn't necessarily know that the funds belong to this particular name. They only know that the user that is doing this transaction went through the KYC process, which is the most important part, basically. Um, so with that, I can now show you maybe a live demonstration of how that, that looks like. Is that cool? Yeah, um, I'm happy and excited to see it here. Um, okay. Yeah, really, really interesting idea. Um, I think this has been what we've needed for a really long time. And um, again, I think this is like what, as you mentioned, crypto is all about, right? making sure that you're able to keep everything that you want private and you can share things out when you want it. But the default or the norm shouldn't be that you have to expose everything about yourself in order to get basic services such as banking. Um, so yeah, let me know whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm gonna share a full window because I need my entire screen. So we have that. Um, yeah, it should be up now. So yep, just we are live. Into... All right. Uh, so what we see here, it's it's also the the, the new wallet, the 2.0 version of the wallet. It's, it's obviously very trimmed down. You can see a lot of coming soon things here because we just created something quick for the hackathon. A lot of buttons on the on the left side are missing as well. Uh, but basically, this is a working wallet. This is my wallet uh, on on Cardano, um, and I have here on the right side. This window acts like the back end service of the of the bank basically. Um, and this is what verifies any proof verification that is needed. And this is just another backend server, basically, for the wallet. So now let's assume that this screen is, is a lot nicer. And it's like the, the ZK Fiat feature inside the wallet. So you can see you not you don't need to go anywhere outside the wallet. And let's say you want to deposit ADA into this bank account. Now, something that we haven't really talked about is why why would you even want to deposit ADA? Uh, so I'll I'll talk about that a little bit later. So now, just for the demonstration, let's say I want to deposit 300 ADA into this bank account. Once I click deposit, uh, basically what happened now on the screen is a couple of things. From the bank side, they received now this thing. So an anonymous Jira wallet user requested proof verification. Um, this is essentially how the zero knowledge proof is being um, transferred to the bank. And at the end of all of this, the bank verifies the proof and returns to the user that the proof went OK. You can also see it here, basically, in the console in the browser. So as you can see, this whole interaction happens directly between the user and the bank, nothing Jira Wallet interfering with in the middle. It's very, very important to, to note about this. Um, we created like a UI just to show that when, when it's OK, it's like a checkbox. Now, the bank account ID, this is what I mentioned before, that Jiro creates. So from this point forward, you see the transaction is created. In the transaction, which is also, it's this thing here when we build the transaction for the user, we're going to use now this bank ID. And the bank isn't familiar with this ID, and this is how we keep the user anonymous. Once I'll put the spending password, it's essentially going to sign the transaction. And that's it. That's 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 how elegant this is. It's very, very simple. What would make this a little bit more challenging um, is to actually implementing it with a bank and the legal stuff around that and getting a bank to even um, understand all the edge cases and how you can maybe reverse engineer. Sometimes you would need to probably reverse engineer uh, to trickle down who the user is. Otherwise, if we if we don't allow to reverse engineer, basically, and I think the zero knowledge technology allows that anyway, um, then it will obviously will never 
you will never be able to achieve this. Um, so yeah, so this is just uh, this is the, the the proof of concept we created for the hackathon. This is what got us the the, the win basically. Um, I have a quick question. Yeah, I have a quick question, if I may. So you were just showing your screen there, um, and just the overall picture here. And I'm going to bring up um, the the proof here, the, the concept here. I want to just quickly reiterate, just to make sure I understand. Mm -hmm. So we have this portion, which is the bank. And what we just saw here was you actually interacting with that bank through the wallet. Now, just for, for beginning, right? The bank is giving you the proof or what you need to verify yourself with them. It's so, basically a proof that I mm -hmm. went through the KYC process with them. Correct. And yep. so that just verifies that, hey, I've done KYC. Mm -hmm. Now, from there, what I saw on your screen was when you did that process, there was a bank ID that was generated from the Jira wallet, which was like 212 or something like that. Yes, 202, yeah. Whenever you actually make the transaction, the bank only sees that some user right, made a deposit or a withdrawal, whatever the case is, some sort of transaction tying back to bank 202. Yep. Now, is this bank here, like that's their unique identifier. Let's say maybe they've got other customers. Mm -hmm. Are other customers also getting that same 202 bank ID to interact with, but just a different user ID, which is generated from the, um, is that from the bank as well? The user ID? So yeah, good, good question. And it's, it's my mistake that I haven't uh, explained that particular part. We found out uh, out of a couple of ideas we had on how, how the bank will then know to put the money in the right place. Cause let's say you have a thousand users. So we thought about the following probably, and I haven't explained that in the, in the, in the presentation. So imagine that let's say there are seven banks that work with this information each Let's, so let's talk about one for now. One bank has one general wallet address, ADA address, to receive. So it's always the same address. So uh, the user, when they want to deposit the money, they will uh, the, the transaction that has been created, it will always go to the same wallet address. Um, because we can add metadata into the transaction, we tell the bank, this comes from bank ID 202. And again, they they don't have um, the relation between bank ID and the user ID. Hold on. So, I, I, I think you may have just misspoke. So I just want to make sure we're, we're on the same page here. Yeah, yeah. You have a thousand users uh -huh. um, and one user makes a transaction. The bank already knows their bank ID. But what they're getting is the user ID. So sorry. When, when, okay. when I say bank ID, it's just an ID that we send to the bank, but it's it's different for every user. It's not the bank's ID. But yeah, let's uh, say, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So sorry, uh, it's it's a terminology that we use, but it's probably confusing. But it's it's a unique ID that is related to the user ID that the bank and the user created between themselves. We just mm -hmm. create another ID. Let's not call it a bank ID. It's just a Jiro ID for that user but it's unique to that user. But only we know the connection between the two. We act as an index, basically, between the two. Um, so when we create the transaction, we use the second ID that we created uh, for the bank as a unique identifier. And then what the bank needs to hold also on, the, on their end is another table that connects between an ADA wallet and the, this secondary ID that the non-custodial wallet created. So if, for example, it happened for the first time and they see that they don't have an ADA wallet attached to that secondary ID, they just deposit the money into this empty ADA wallet. And from there, it's all transparent and on the blockchain. We don't even need an API from them to tell the user how much money they deposited because it's, it's on the blockchain. Uh, so it's very easy. Um, but what this achieves is that as a bank, they don't know who deposited the money. They only know that whoever it was, he is okay to deposit the money because he went through the KYC process. Mm -hmm. So when users will try to send just money to this bank um, without a proof, they can simply 
they can't decline the money, but they can re return it back to sender because it's all transparent on the blockchain. Too. So there is, and even if it, and even if not, who would be crazy enough to just send free money to a bank, you know? So, but but it, it covers that use case as well. Like no one would do that, and if they do, it's all transparent and on the blockchain, and the bank can simply return it back um, if they haven't um, recognized the proof in the same transaction. Noted. Thank you for the clarification there. Um, I think you probably can already guess what my next few questions are going to be. You know, it's like, this is a concept. That's great. I think it's a wonderful idea. But when do we actually get to see this? You know, <laughs> um, I know this project Catalyst, you know, um, you're obviously we just with... missed. I wish this hackathon <laughs> was a month ago. You know, <laughs> I know this would have definitely, I think, been one of the ones to have been funded. I mean, this is a no brainer. Um, so I'd love to hear about what your thoughts are to get this to market from this concept phase now. Yeah, so we we spoke already. Uh, I spoke with Cerberus and I even spoke with you about this, that uh, we already had an idea to white label a bank inside Jira Wallet. Um, and we are in talks in very advanced talks with uh, some bank in Europe that is operating in 30 something countries, basically regulated by the European Union. Um, but it didn't have the, the idea we had so far didn't have the twist with the zero knowledge. So we are going to go with the implementation of white labeling the bank inside the wallet regardless. And um, given that this idea, first of all, won the hackathon and, you know, when when the, the IOG judge, uh, Michael, uh, when he talked about the, the project that won, basically, he uh, he mentioned how this might actually, you know, be changing the way that we interact like it was i'm still kind of in awe that that that's how it's being perceived and it's it's obviously it's it's nice um but yes to actually achieve this um and i also participated in an interview with with uh, jj and patrick before um they they know that they would need to give a hand when it comes to the legal stuff with the relations uh, to talk to certain people like this is not something that would be easy to implement technologically maybe this is not a very demanding te technological project it's more regulations and making sure you cover all the edge cases and uh, leaving room to if if it is fraud if it isn't fraud and this is how we also implement siren you know cerberus's feature into all of this a lot of the features and you can see also i i i it's inevitable that web 2 and web 3 are kind starting to merge and they starting to work together rather than trying to beat each other you see it with the etfs on nasdaq uh, you see it with um um on on bitcoin you can already um transfer Bitcoin directly into a bank and they do like the exchange for you. Um, so yeah, so it's inevitable that it's gonna happen. That's my belief. That's our conviction in Jiro. And uh, there will be a lot of progress about this happening. I'm meeting the midnight team tomorrow as well to talk about this. And I think IOG will also put like, uh, if, even if not financial help, but legal help and, and advisories and, and stuff like that, this will happen. It's just a matter of um, uh, how fast it's gonna happen. Hopefully it's not gonna take months. Um, the issue is gonna probably be the web two world rather than the web three, because we have the proof of concept. Uh, we can show them that ideally, like, and philosophically this works. We only need to find ways now how, as regulators, how they can implement these things that we are, that we, you know, I'm not a banker. I don't, I know not much about the financial institutions. There are probably things that we haven't covered. We haven't thought about edge cases and stuff like that. Um, but uh, the idea with the bank, regardless, that's coming to Jiro. Hopefully I'm going to fly to Europe again next month to uh, to meet with that bank and and basically sign a contract with them and, and bring it forward to um, to Jira Wallet. Uh, but yeah, like everything great and complex and that involves institutions, those things take time. Most of the time is spent on kindergarten, trying to sign contracts and, you know, talk with lawyers and stuff like that. It's not even developing, like, uh, so yeah. <laughs> no, welcome to Cardano and welcome to crypto. 
um, patience. Patience is uh, is a tough one to deal with in in a world where people like to have things instantly. Something as uh, as big of a game changer as this, I think, really, really needs um, eyes, T's, you know, to be dotted and crossed all the way through. And as you said, I think getting the adoption from the Web three community, this is what we've expected since 2010. You know, is the the privacy portion of it. That's what blockchain is always touted as. But when you have off ramps and on ramps where people are able to easily track what you're doing, do you really have that privacy? So um, as you mentioned, I think the biggest thing is just going to be to pitch this and to get banks or the traditional finance space on board. And a little bit of that I'm sure is going to be difficult because you're asking them to sort of relinquish a little bit of power. Right. Yeah. You may not want to call it that, but we're asking them to give away a little bit, a little bit of power that they have historically had for a really, really long time. So um, I'm sure, you know. Whoever joins in at first, um, they might get the side eye from other banks or other TradFi institutions like, hey, what are you doing? Um, but I think ultimately, as these technologies grow, somebody will figure out a way to do this. And I think over time, it's just going to be the norm that banks don't have access to all of the stuff that they've historically had have had access to. I think people are beginning to finally question you know, how much do you really need to know about every single person that you're providing services to? Because at the end of the day, um, we've seen people targeted. We've seen certain banks put down restrictions on how much a particular person can withdraw and then move over into a crypto based platform. You know, they're literally hindering people from doing what yeah. they want with their hard earned money. That's not their job to do that. That's not their duty. Yep. So I think this option here allows for people to be able to transact more freely without the worry that like Big Brother, the bank is watching me. Yeah, and also keep in mind if if you're a bank now and you're listening, um, this this market is worth trillions of dollars. Like you can't escape the fact that more and more people want to embrace crypto for various reasons, um, but it's growing. It's growing, and it, it will keep growing. And um, the bank that we are interacting with, they also have their own exchange. So this is why it's so. As a user, you don't need to go to Binance, to KuCoin, to pay them fees and like wait 25 minutes for the network, like their network to approve it and stuff like that. Um, I, I have the have full belief that within two to three years, it's going to be like a no brainer for a bank to hold their own exchange, basically, and hold like um, liquidity for certain crypto coins. Um, this bank that we're interacting with, they, they're they mostly Ethereum, Bitcoin. And now we are basically um, uh, trying to onboard them to Cardano. Uh, we showed them how Cardano was never down a single, you know, a single minute. It survived like DDoS attacks. Um, it's scalable. The technology is there. And uh, people can't keep um, um, ignoring that, basically. So two points here before I jump into closing thoughts with you here, Adam. Uh, number one, I love the fact that you've been able to sort of tout, you know, Cardano's resilience with other people. I think people underestimate that we just hit Epoch 500, over 2,500 days straight, no outages. We're second place only to Bitcoin, right? Yep. So we're, we've been up longer than Ethereum, Solana, Polygon, all these chains that people say are better than Cardano. Well, hey, Cardano is better than you guys here. The second piece is, as we see more banks beginning to hold their own liquidity to provide more in-house swaps, right, for crypto, for lack of better terms, what do you think happens to something like Coinbase? For, for example, something like Binance, you know, because now you're threatening them because now you no longer need them in the middle anymore, you know? And I pose a very similar question to the team from the Maya protocol, which is doing something very similar. You know, they're, they're allowing for people to basically transact between different blockchains without having to go to centralized exchange, which has been the norm for a really long time, right? So um, again, I think that as more of these solutions come out, they're great for the end user, but for the people that have historically played as the middlemen, you're now starting to eat into their bread and butter. Let's say I'm gonna lock my doors more often now at night. Um, yeah. Look, they dominated uh, the space for a very long time. Some of them provide good solutions, but some of them are also very uh, predatory. They take high fees. 
Uh, they can decide not to transfer money like they, I know in Binance, you know how many times it told me like the network is currently going through maintenance or some bullshit like there's no at, maintenance. At, at the worst possible times. At the worst possible times because they don't want to give up their liquidity. And um, like any large institution that holds power, uh, the people are going to find alternative solutions. And uh, I guess that's kind of what inspired us as well. Uh, the, I hate the fact that I need to go through so many KYCs and so many loops just to get my, um, you know, ADA that I've made. I, I made a good snack move a couple of days ago. I want to buy myself a nice, I don't know, microwave now. I can't do that. It's it's. I need to prove the bank that it's not from some uh, money laundering scheme or some NFT scheme. Like in general, there were so many things that happened in the last five years with crypto that gave it a bad name, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, what inspired us is is exactly what you mentioned. And also the fact that we believe that we need to uh, combine the forces rather than try to beat them. I don't think we will be able to beat them. I don't think there's a necessity to beat anyone. Um, that system has been with humanity for very long time and uh, this advancement need to be combined into it rather than try to you know wrap it and, and destroy it uh, i don't think that would ever work so um i hope that answers the question <laughs> no that does that does um adam here from the jira wallet team breaking down zk fiat a brand new um, option to keep your privacy right while still being able to interact on board, off board as quickly um, and as easily as you wish. Um, any final or just parting thoughts that you want to share with us? I mean, if anybody wants to get in touch with you, anybody wants to provide maybe legal help, you know, wants to just join the Jira community, how can they do that? Yep. Uh, we have a Twitter, we have Discord, Telegram, everything is on our website, uh, JiraWallet.io. Um, we are um, open to talk to anyone and, um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure as always. And hopefully I can be here soon again to show you the real thing uh, working. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just as excited. And um, again, I know you guys have a lot of um, things cooking in the fire. The last time yeah. you were on, you, you showed us uh, Adaflow. I'm excited to see that there. You've talked about partnerships with um, the servers team using Siren, um, the Cardano Shield. I mean, there's a lot of different things going on here. And again, I think this really, really elevates the not just not just your wallet, but the entire space. You know, so yeah. we need more of these um, holistic solutions to come out to really make it simple and easy for new people to come in here with as least as much friction as possible. That'll do it here for today's video. Again, Adam, huge shout out to you. Appreciate you joining me here for, for today's video. For you, the viewer watching at home, hopefully you guys have found this to be valuable. If you did, or if you just learned anything along the way, I would appreciate you if you could smash that thumbs up. It's one of the easiest ways here to support me as a content creator. And it's also one of the best ways to let other people know about what's going on here in the Cardano ecosystem. If you want more content just like this, breaking down everything on the network, consider subscribing to the channel. And last but not least, if you have any questions about the Jira wallet, the recent hackathon host by Nmaker, ZK Fiat, or anything else that we've discussed here as a part of today's video, then make sure you leave a comment down there as well. That said, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next video.